So whenever you open up Speedtree for the first time, you're going to be prompted with a screen like this. So this is basically the interface. I'm using the Speedtree Cinema version, model, modeler version 9. And uh, when you open it up for the first time, you're going to be prompted with this new tree window. You have some pre-built models and trees, and you have a blank scene. So I think it's better to start with one of these models, which are pre-built. So what I'm going to do is click on one. And then you will be, you know, greeted with the interface. So it's a, if you've used like 3D softwares before, it'll all make sense for you. I mean, it'll be a lot more easier to know what certain things are. But if you haven't used like any 3D softwares, don't worry because I'm going to explain everything and you will understand. So you have your windows here and then you have the generation, which is basically a, a sort of uh, node based view of your tree like just like a tree itself so you have the base and you have the different elements and you click on one and you'll get the properties here on the properties bar you can also select them on the viewport itself so this is called the perspective view which is like a 3d representation of your tree and now I'm going to show you guys how to navigate so uh, if you uh, click lift mouse click and drag you will be able to rotate around your model if you want to zoom in and out you can use the wheel of the mouse and if you want to pan around so you uh, hold down the middle click of the mouse and then drag up and down or lift and right and you'll be able to you know you know navigate around your tree so lift mouse click for the orbit uh, middle mouse for the you know for the zooming and zooming out and middle mouse click for uh, you know panning up and down and left and right so it, it will take some time to get used to but it's quite fine and then if you if you just lost your tree somehow so you you, you lost your tree just double click on a blank area and it'll bring it up for you and uh, you know if you if you've zoomed out too much you can hit Z to frame all or you can click here and if you want to change the shortcuts uh, to other 3D softwares like 3D Studio Max and Maya, you can go into Edit, Preferences, go to Tree Window, and then there's this Control Scheme. So you can set it to Maya or 3ds Max, whichever you prefer. But you know, even the default version of Speed Tree is fine. And if for some reason you find it that your zooming with the wheel of the mouse is reversed, you can go ahead and turn on. By default, it's turned off, so you can turn on the wheel. Uh, reverse zooming and it'll feel more natural and uh, the other very important thing is this height indicator so if I cancel this you can see that this tree is roughly about 45 feet so because the unit is set to feet if I go to edit preferences uh, preferences and then tree window so it's feet but it is crucial if you want to export this to some other 3d softwares and uh, especially like Unreal Engine, which uses like centimeters. So if you, you want to set it up, uh, you know, initially before you create the tree. But even though if you've created this in like what feet uh, units, you can convert it to centimeters by going to tools and going to scene unit conversion. And then you want to convert it from like feet to centimeters and then hit OK. And it'll just convert it and then you lost your tree right so double click on an empty area and it'll bring it up for you so it'll be fine once you export it to your 3d application of choice so let's talk about some other things so this is the viewport you have one view if you want to change it so just click on an empty area go to window properties you can go with four views you have the top view you have your X, y, X, Z plane, just like the left view, and then you have the Y, Z plane, just like your front view, uh, something like that. You can also change it to like two side by side or two uh, over, under, you know. And uh, you, can, you have some different other parameters here, so you can go with one view, or if you want to just change. Uh, switch between the different layouts you can just double click with the middle of the mouse and it'll just go ahead and switch it for you so you have the grid lines color you can go ahead and chain that to probably like red and it'll chain that and then you have this uh, the grid and the height of the tree you know the color is changed you can go back to 
the default black. All right. And yeah. And then there's this little guy because this tree is now like huge. So it's actually like 1300 centimeters. So this guy is very small compared to the tree. So it's just like a, a figure, like a stick figure for comparison. So this tree is huge right now because we just converted it from feet to uh, centimeters. And then you have the grid spacing. If it is too tight, you can go ahead and increase the distance between them. And of course, each of these little squares is one centimeter. And then you have the light map view. So this is actually very important when you want to export it to Unreal Engine. Uh, you know, you can use them inside Unreal Engine and we'll be taking a look at that, you know, later when we want to export the tree. So, yeah. And then you have the background style. So, you know, there's ambient light, you have solid color, which is actually really nice. So I prefer it sometimes because you just want like a plain color instead of having the sun just like that, like a gradient. So you can change that to solid color. And then if the tree is a little, you know, if it is lagging for some reason, it's because of the resolution might be too high. So you can go with medium, it'll just decrease it a bit for you, or you can go with low and draft. Draft is basically like the lowest thing possible so it'll just hide a few of the leaves to make it much more you know friendly to work with in the environment because sometimes the tree can get really dense and you go back to window properties and you have a lot of different other options you have a spherical panorama which you can use so let's say if you're just compositing this tree on an image so you can just go and click and browse and if I go into my C drive, you can just go ahead and double click. I have an HDR here, so you can rotate around. You can rotate it, you can adjust the contrast, the brightness and everything. But I but I do prefer the solid color the most because it just gives you like a really nice and neutral color to be able to work with and just click away. And then you can also change your lighting, so the intensity and everything, which we will be taking a look at in some future tutorials but you know everything is customizable and you can change it inside here so let's take a look at some of these so you have the file and then you go you have render so you have different modes of rendering so you, you see scribed is actually showing the polygons and the edges and the faces of the model so it's actually a very good representation of like how dense the polygons are, the distribution and everything. So you can see that right there. You can also go to AO for the ambient occlusion. Right now it's not calculated. So if you want to see it, you can go into uh, tools and render ambient occlusion, click on it. It'll take a second and then calculate the ambient occlusion for you. So and the ambient, ambient occlusion is basically showing, you know, which areas, if some area is directly hit by the sunlight it'll be bright and the areas that are not it'll just be like dark and it's it's actually a very necessary component of having a realistic tree so you know you need it but if you want to clear this out you can go to window clear ambient occlusion and then go back to your standard mode and you have your tree here and you have some other things here so you have the lighting which one which lighting you want to see or you, the material which uh, sort of so if you want to see a specific sort of uh, you know map like just like the color map so you can go and see it because uh, Speedtree is a PBR based you know software so you have all the maps here and if you want to see a specific sort of material you can go ahead and see it here so you can just click and it'll just take a second to basically show you so this is the specular and if I go back to standard I have everything combined together. All right. And uh, you have some other things which we'll be taking a look at. You have forces and then you show you, you can you can hide the leaves. You can go with fronds or branches if you don't want to see them. So it's basically like, you know, hiding and showing the different elements of the tree. And then you have wind. So if you click on it, enable, you hit eight and you have the wind here. So it's actually a really realistic win. So it's, it's super realistic. And then you can go ahead and go with the strength here. So if you increase it too much, the tree is going to be wild like a storm. 
And the shortcut for enabling and disabling it is eight. So you hit eight and then you have the wind on and off. And then you have the light. So if I go back to the window properties, uh, sorry, the lighting, you can go and, sorry, um, going back to the window properties, I wanna change it to ambient light. So you have your light here, right? If you wanna change the light, you can go ahead and change it from here. You have different presets. You wanna have forest, or you can go and have like a winter or something. So you have different lighting presets, which we'll be taking a look at again, but then, you know, here it is. And for shadow, you have low quality shadows. So it's very low quality right now. And if I go into shadows, ultra quality, you'll have the finest details in the shadow. So if, if you hit eight for the wind, you will see that it's very strong. So you can go ahead and decrease it. And you can also go ahead and set the conditions here to stormy, calm, breezy, or whatever that you want. And we'll be taking a look at them a bit later too. And we've already taken a look at the resolution here. So you can go with high, medium, low, and draft. So sometimes I'm just gonna hit A to disable the wind. So sometimes you're gonna be having like a tree that is very detailed and you don't want it to slow down your work. So you can just go switch between the different resolutions. I'm actually gonna choose a different sort of um, preset here. Night desert, seaside, mountain peak, misty forest. Yeah, it's looking nice. Or you can just go with the standard preset. And I'm just gonna go back here. Window properties, set the thing, the background to a solid color. I like it this way, so I don't know why. And then you have the different generator generator modes. So you have generator, you have node, and then you have freehand, which we'll be taking a look at, which are like the different ways of creating like trees and stuff and branches and stuff. So we'll be taking a look at them. And then you have add, so you can add trunks, you can add leaves, you can have fronds and cap and everything, which we'll be taking a look at uh, later. So you have a couple of different options here and then we'll be taking a look at most of them in some future tutorials. And this very uh, cool setting here is a season. So you can change the season. So you can drag it here. It'll be summer. So the leaves just turn like, you know, like summery or autumn, you know. And you have the winter, which the leaves will be, you know, fallen off. And if you wanna see those dropped leaves, you can just go ahead and turn this on you will see the leaves that are dropped. So, you know, by the winter, most of the leaves are dead. You can also click on these and switch between them directly. So you'll have winter, autumn, and summer, and spring. So this is actually a very, very interesting, you know, thing, which which is just like super realistic. And then you can go ahead and hit eight. And, you know, even the leaves on the floor, I believe they are shaking a bit from the wind. So this is actually like super realistic uh, and, you know, simulating the wind and stuff. And then uh, in like later tutorials, we'll be talking about, you know, how to export this wind and how to export this tree in the 3D program of your choice. So I'm just going to hit eight and go back to season, go back to spring. And then you have your materials here, which you'll be, we'll be taking a look at. And then you have your timeline as well, which we will be taking a look at as well. So for the wind and for growth and stuff like that. And yeah, this was the beginner uh, first, you know, interface tutorial of Speedtree. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, you know, uh, you know, make sure to show your appreciation by subscribing to my channel. And, uh, you know, the other parts are yet to come. So be sure to stay tuned and we will see you in the next video.